Good morning, Collective. It's Al. Welcome back to the channel. Today, what I want to do is talk about something known as leadership, setting aside for a moment the whole topic of spiritual leadership just for the time being. And, and what I wanted to regard is specifically what's been going on around our world uh, lately, which is this um, undercurrent of censorship and an inability to express various ideas and thoughts due to a system that seems to be more geared towards a oppression and towards um, kind of squashing any type of freedom of speech or freedom of expression. And what I wanted to point out specifically was um, something that can be seen very clearly in our journalism and reporting um, around the globe right now, where everyone is being, I don't know if it's being controlled or manipulated into feeling like they can't speak to what that used to entail where we used to exist in an environment that was very very strongly built on freedoms and to investigate things that may not be popular but to bring stories the truth of things out of the darkness right like a lotus flower that grows in the dank of night something like that beauty you must sometimes go into the dark to in order to express it and you will see the beauty of it um for what it is and you would bring that truth to the world but nowadays what i'm finding is that we have kind of lost track of that and the way that we can best see that is in journalism and reporting in general i don't know if you guys have noticed but where we once had the ability to talk about let's say our presidency or our president um, as opposed to um, not speaking about it we went through an entire administration that basically banned any negative press regarding that person and I remember not long ago when I was, when I was growing up we had Murphy Brown who went one on one 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 to one over uh, the vice presidency and so I remember thinking well that's kind of odd that we've lost our sense of direction here because reporters in particular used to be the ones who went and, and found the truth of things that people didn't want to know. And now it seems like once that happened, where we all basically had to sell our freedoms away in order to just be heard, the people maybe got a little accustomed to it. And what I mean by that is that I noticed that I got censored when I was talking about the thing going on in the environment now with the world. And it wasn't anything that I hadn't gotten information from their own websites, but because I was saying something that seemed like it was contradictory, even though it came from that source, I was still banned. And I just remember thinking, well, there was a time when our reporters used to do that for us, used to do that specifically for us as, humans, as a humanity. But what I've noticed is that Nowadays, it seems like they are more bickering with each other and controlling, fear-mongering. It's almost like we've lost our sense of ability to stand in our own nobility, our own pride, our own ability to think for ourselves. And I start to think about the wonderful freedom fighters that reporters used to be, and journalists in particular, where they used to express ideas that were, were, that were contradictory to the norm and how much more value they brought to our world. And so I started to think about like what I would say to a reporter out there nowadays, like, why aren't we covering the stories about people that are actually posing real questions about this whole thing? Why is that a censored moment? Why is it that we still abide by this rule that we can't speak about a president when there's freedom of speech and freedom of expression? Where did we lose our way? And it kind of reminded me of like course correction and things that are going on in more spiritual circles. And so I thought about it and I was thinking, well, who on earth would ever... Once we lose our freedom fighters, once we lose the neutrality of our reporters and our journalists, then I felt like I needed to say something to that world because I'm watching as people are charging insurmountable amounts for a studio apartment for something that should be like, let's say $800 in Los Angeles is now going for like $1,700 because they can price gouge, but that's not being reported on. Everybody's focused on something that's going around that is going to affect you or not affect you depending on your health conditions and so forth. But we're not even allowed to question what's going on in that arena. So now we're not allowed to talk to about presidencies. We're not allowed to question uh, patriotic things. And I'm just thinking, well, what about Vietnam? What about all the things that happened during the Korean War? What happened about our freedom of expression to just question things during the AIDS epidemic? What? Why are all of those things now squashed? And it made me just start to get a little bit like, well, what do? how do we as people ask for our freedom fighters to step back up to the plate? Are the ratings more important to you than it is to bring to bring truth to the world? Are you afraid that you will lose your monetary gains for being at a desk? Are you afraid that that is more
more important than what you used to stand for because now what we see is one network, network uh, bickering with the other networks and it's very catty and very girly like not to be disrespectful towards women notice there's a difference between women and girls but it's very girly it's very catty it's like oh well they said this and this and it's just like yes but what are you saying are you bringing value to the world anymore or are you just feeling suppressed and oppressed and feeling like you can't say anything you have to wait for the right time and i just remember thinking there was a time when our reporters wore our freedom fighters they were our warriors. They went in for our, us as a collective. They used to fight for our rights and they used to go and be unpopular for a time to bring truth out. Isn't that what ascension is? Isn't that what this is all about? Isn't it why we're here on our planet? Is your a fear of losing ratings and somehow losing fans more important than what's good for society or what is good for just being able to have freedom of expression? When did it become illegal to share opposing views with other people? When was that allowable to be censored? Was it 9-11 where the towers came down? And there's questions. There. I mean, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but we're not even allowed to question things there. And so then the Patriot, uh, Patriotic Act went through. Uh, Patriot Act, I'm sorry. And then that took away people's rights. And everybody's like, oh, well, that's okay because there's, as you know. No, that's still not okay. But, you know, I, I, I kind of bought it too. I was like, well... We still have to know who the terrorists are. And then I started to realize, well, okay, that then led to now we're fighting for Roe v. Wade, which is, again, taking people's rights away. But we don't want to talk about that right now because we're worried about this thing going around the world that seems questionable, but nobody's allowed to talk about it because, oh, then you would be doing this, that, and the other. And I'm just like, but isn't that what we're here to do is to learn? So if we're not allowed to question things, then what exactly is the point of life? And as you all know, I'm, I'm a spiritual leader. I really deal deeply with the topic of, of the divine. And the divine universe saying to us, well, then you're not living. If you're not learning and you're not bringing truth to the table, then what are you here doing? What is your task? And so I'm wondering... <clears throat> If possibly we now need a new bloodline to the reporting field to get new reporters, fresh reporters that aren't afraid of ratings or aren't afraid of bad reputation because they already have amassed a huge amount of money, right? The best reporters in the world are, are built on financial stability. That's why they anchor desks. That's why they do what they do. And I was like, well, who the hell would I talk to about this? And so I realized, well, I have a platform. It may not be the, the biggest one in the world, but it's mine and it speaks the truth. And I thought, well, who do I know that would have the most noble of hearts and I was like well Anderson Cooper and so Anderson Cooper if you're out there out of pure curiosity aren't you noticing that 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 we're slipping further and further into a state of oppression where people can't even discuss things I mean there was a point when in our lives in our lifetime in particular where we went through the AIDS epidemic and what happened to those people is similar to what's going on now with the fact that we're cremating body but we're not allowed to ask these questions aren't you as a reporter and I'm not speaking directly to you boss like you know that <laughs> I think you're the cat's meow but that's a secondary thing the point that I'm making is we need people like Winfrey, Oprah Winfrey, who create their own networks and bring about change and bring uplifting in information. But for more reporters, we need a reporting network that actually reports contradictory things that, you know, there, there are multiple truths that can be true at once, right? So why aren't we discussing the possibility that some of these things don't make sense? And why not seek the truth answers so that people, so the conspiracy theories dissipate? If we're so convinced that you, we don't have the right to ask these questions, then why don't we answer the question first? Why aren't we asking the tough questions? And is it that we need people who, like me, who are just going to walk up and be like, I'm going to just ask you the question? you know is is there something that we've lost there and the only person i could think of that would probably understand that better would be anderson cooper because i know like i've watched his work over the course of his lifetime you know and it's uh, he has a very interesting storyline he has nobility of the of spirit and so i actually wrote something down before i came on here and it was about nobility in general and it's the quality of being noble in character mind um both or rank or the group of people belonging to the noble clan in a country, especially those with a hereditary or honorable title. Is that not what we're speaking of? And it's something that's been like really bugging me because I live in America and in America we have freedom of speech or we used to, but now we can't say anything bad about the person who totally took people's rights away because he was a president and that gives him some immunity. And so it seems to be carrying on into this new administration. I'm just like, well, 
how does that help us as Americans feel safer and better if we're not even allowed to question things? I mean, I got censored on this channel for something that I had gotten off a website from the CDC, but they, uh, you know what I mean? So if things like that are going on and you're aware of that and you know that people are being relocated and moved around and something's just not right somewhere somehow, but you're not asking the questions, then how are you still our freedom fighters? How are we still standing? How are, how is it that we as American people are to trust our, our warriors and our, our reporters anymore if they're not willing to step outside of the box in which they consider their livelihood, which is just TV, and remember that they started their career off as journalists, as people who went for the truth no matter what. But in place now, everybody's so fearful of things that it doesn't it bother reporters that they're being used to fear monger? Doesn't that upset, the, like for me, I can, I'm can. i sure, that because like, if it's up to me, it definitely probably would upset somebody like Anderson Cooper. So that's why I'm speaking to him directly, because, you know, I, what are the chances in hell that I would ever actually get to talk to him? But what I'm saying is that that type of reporter, that type of integral person, somebody who stands with honor and respect, probably is feeling the same strain. So I was just wanting to bring that forward, because just so you know, you have the support of the people. The people are at a stage right now where we just... We can't win for trying. We can't. We can't ask questions because that's not. Why is that not allowable? We used to go back and forth in just entertainment in general. In the '90s, we had that whole Murphy Brown thing about the her having the baby and all this stuff, and the vice president said something, and they threw stones at each other, and it was it was what we used to call political dialogue. It was the freedom of expression, the freedom of free will. Where is that? And where are the the people that support that? Because we desperately, as people across the globe, need answers that are not being given to us. You know, why is no one asking the question, where's this money coming from? We've never, you don't get anything for free in this world, ever. So why is this all happening now? What is it that we're not seeing? And why aren't we asking the question? It, it has nothing to do with conspiracy, because I'm the first one to say, if you answer the question, there would be no conspiracy. Conspiracy begins when you start to dodge the question. And the question that I then would have is, why aren't we allowed to ask the questions publicly? That's not a health concern. That's not contradictory. We're not saying don't go get, I mean, I personally have said don't go get, you know, X, Y, Z, because I just don't trust anything that was made in four months. But people in general have the right to ask these questions. And if our reporters aren't asking it, then we're not allowed to even think anymore. What happened to the days when we used to talk about like books and controversial topics? Now we can't even discuss that. We're not allowed to speak about an administration that was suppressive and oppressive to its people because somehow that's that's not okay. Since when? We've been talking about people. People have been talking about people since the dawn of time. And so when when did we become uh, when did we become like a communist country like I don't understand where that came from I'm not saying that, we're, that America's a communist country because that would be ridiculously out uh, like completely out of there but what I'm saying to you is when did that become the norm when did we the people lose our voice when did you not you personally Mr. Cooper but when did reporters lose their their zest for what they do isn't one of the, like as a, a spiritual leader, one of my biggest things is that I'm driven by truth and I'm driven by uh, freeing the world. I'm driven by loving the world. I'm driven by, use, uh, to, by uh, um, reaching people who have been through the darkest of times and have converted something into a beautiful state of being, an evolutionary state. Isn't that what reporters do as well, but with news? You take a story that is really hard to digest and you bring it forward to the, to the light of the people and it brings them freedom and understanding that they probably didn't have. But nowadays, we don't have that. What happened to our reporters? What happened to our journalists? What happened to our networks that used to sit there and go, well, they can put as much pressure on us as, as they want. This is a story. This is a really good story. This is, brings about light. This brings about revelation. This brings about truth. This brings about honor. This brings about respect. When did we lose that? And why is no one asking the question? Is it because we're afraid that we're going to be judged? Well, I hate to break it to you, but on a spiritual level, we're being judged by something way bigger. And it's time that we start to really get together on this because at the end of the day, at the end of time, we're going to be judged on whether we showed up with nobility and integrity. 
Either way, it looks like, according to the fear-mongering, that we might be checking out of here any moment. So then why not invest in the truth of the stories? Why not ask the questions that no one's asking and regain that strength and that power of courage that reporters used to have? Why am I watching bickering between reporters? I don't care what your personal, no, oh, no offense to anybody, but your personal opinion or who you vote for is irrelevant. Your personal opinion on this topic is also irrelevant. Why are we listening to this banter back and forth? There has to be more Anderson Coopers out there that are willing to do the job that's asked of them, which is to stay neutral, to play Switzerland, and to stand and ask the questions that no one is willing to ask. It doesn't matter if people like you or don't like you, because at the end of the day, the only person that you need to worry about is the divine. And if the divine is in here telling me at 3 o'clock in the morning to get up and say the story, to tell, to talk about this, not the story, but to talk about how this is turning into a, like, a story. It's like, it's like a big existence. <laughs> it's like, I got woken up at 3 in the morning to talk about this, and I was just like, it was something that came to me. I was like, yes, this is, this is what I've been talking about. And it's time we, we talk eye to eye. And the only person I can think of, of course, is Anderson Cooper. And so I'm going to stop saying his name because I'm not sure he wants to be involved in this little banter. But that nobility of the spirit that he possesses, where is that in the rest of the reporting staff? Where is that the rest of the networks? Why aren't you all helping us answer these questions? If they're so stupid and if they're so not important, if it is conspiracy, then speak to it. So that we, the people, can stop going, when is the last time we ever got free money? When is the last time that this... None of this is making sense. But if no one speaks about it, then it just stays like an undercurrent under our, un under our noses. And if we don't answer the question, then we ourselves are hiding in fear. Where are our warriors? Where are our freedom fighters? Where are our voice? We have enough bureaucratic assholes running around in the government offices. We need our people to do their jobs. And I know that I'm, you know, that I'm not, in, you know, I'm not one of the networks that runs these things. But in order for us to find the light, people must make it through the this, this shadow period. But they're stuck. We're stuck. We're in stagnation. We can't move. Everybody... Well, not everybody, but like 99% of the population is in complete fear of this. And then you have 1% of the population just going, what are y'all doing? Why not engage that 1% that is ineffective and healthy and happy and going through a wonderful experience? And why not focus on that and ask the questions that got them there as opposed to all of the 99% of the people who are in fear? Where is the integrity that once stood by our reporters? When did the networks lose their zest to keep going? Since when would you ever agree to have a presidency? I don't care who the fuck it is. I said for who, who, when would, when in history have you ever heard of a network? Sorry, I don't mean to put in a, a network to that. Oh yes, sir. Yes, let me bend over, take it for you. Yes, I understand. Oppression is. It. Oh, we can't answer, ask any questions. How ridiculous is that? The divine's looking at everybody and just going, what the hell are y'all doing? You make how much money a year to ask questions and you won't even ask the questions? And then it's like, we, the people of the United States, need answers. We need help and we need our warriors. We need real people with honor of spirit, with people who are nobility of the spirit, who are courageous, who stand up, who, if they say they're neutral, then you should be asking these questions up, down, left, right, and center. Like, there should be no hesitation. If they take you off the air, don't you have, like, millions of dollars where you can go do your own network? Like, why don't we start investing in our money wisely into people who are willing to do it? Because I guarantee you, the moment that any one of you decide to step outside of this facade, of this fear, and this bullshit, because you know that they can't do anything. It's freedom of speech. We are The whole country is founded on that. So why not step up and find people who are willing to stand with you and just go at it? Like, I guarantee you that the moment that someone decides to do this, that your network will blow up. It will be the number one network in the world because it will bring the news back. It will bring the truth back. It will bring contradictory points to each other and we can have debates that are responsible. At this point, we're so polarized that no one in our country or in the world for that matter can even ask a freaking question. We are censored in America. 
You used to fight that. You used to fight to stand for something. And now you just fall and lay, like, everybody's just, like, bending over with, like, soap and going, hey, I'll take it left, I'll take it right. Oh, yeah, no, oh, yeah. Get some KY. Like, what are we doing? It's a serious question, because at this point, it's the American people in particular, because I'm in America, guys, not that the world isn't going through this, but there seems to be something about anger here that's missing in most civilizations that's unusual for especially in a culture like america where we are quick to anger and war hungry suddenly everybody's all docile and peaceful why is that not a story why is the people not asking that what about the fact that why are most kids allowed to not wear masks what there are children these little things that nobody wants to talk about because how is that contradictory to be careful, you know, do this and do that. That has nothing to do with anything. But if we don't fill these holes, you have a civilization that eventually will blow up. And when it does, all hell will break loose. And you have to ask yourself, what part did you play in it? Were you the patsy that was used as a pawn? Are you just a pawn piece that is being used by a network that doesn't want you to do your job suddenly, even though that's how they became a network? then that's a question that we need to answer. And I'm sorry I'm being so candid, but it's something that I feel very passionate about. The world needs ascension. It needs to rise above the chaos, but we can't do that if no one's willing to do their jobs anymore. Ask the tough questions. If you are not being supported in your environment, then seek someone who is going to support you no matter what. Seek a freedom fighter like me, somebody who doesn't care that it's 3 o'clock in the morning and is going to get up and get on YouTube and say it, and risk whatever it, because there's no risk truth must always be shared a reporter must always stand in neutrality they must be able to separate their feelings what happened to that what happened to our our comrades our speakers the people who represented us in the face of adversity what happened to the murphy browns in the world what happened to the anderson coopers of the past what is going on because we the people are desperate for answers and a lot of us are going through hunger. A lot of us are going through really horrible situations to drug addictions up to wazoo. Pharmaceutical companies are making billions of dollars. Nobody's willing to ask any of it because of something going on in the front. Well, yes, but most of us don't just care about the front. Nobody is that, um, nobody is that vacant of, of depth. You still want to know what's going on behind the scenes, but no one's willing to look at that because you're all being distracted by the glitter here. Yes, it's going to mutate. That's what it does. Where is the wake-up call that needs to happen here? Because the rest of us are awakened that this isn't, this is just not right. Censorship, not being able to speak about presidencies, not being able to ask questions about colds, not being able to ask questions with this, that, and the other. When did you sell your soul to the devil? When did that happen? When did reporters decide that it was better to be on the air and make their money than to do their job? Because we, the people, are desperate right now. We, we're, we don't have jobs. We're all having to sacrifice our integrity and to go against our, our moral centers. And we're losing our faith left, right, and center. We can't even go out and congregate. Where is our leaders? Because the ones in bureaucracy are really enjoying the flames of money that's coming their way. But you, the reporters, who are our frontline defenders, the true frontline defenders outside of the medical world, two different fields, you sold us up the river. And we need our reporters back. We need true reporting. That's it for me, guys, on Altruistic Channel. I hope you guys have a wonderful evening. I'm going to keep this very short. Um, if any of you ever want to get a hold of me, my number is 818-984-5339. I don't know what's going on, but I know speaking for myself as a spiritual leader and as a person who stands with integrity, honor, and respect, I miss the loyalty and the nobility of spirit that used to exist and the people who used to fight for our freedoms and now just hand it away left, right, and center. We need you. We need you back. Night. I'm going back to bed. Mm -hmm.